They also have special trade connections with North Africa and the Islamic State in Spain, the Moors. So they borrowed ideas from the West. So the minaret above the complex is a square. This is a typical Moorish touch. The marble square calligraphy that we see on the wall around us, this is an Eastern touch. The decorative mother of a pearl work on the walls, that's an Eastern touch. The calligraphy and the decoration above the calligraphy, this is almost a Chinese touch, means where we're standing here is a melting pot of artistic styles. A melting pot reflects the time, the early Mameluk art, the kingdom of the famous traders who actually were in the middle of the world and were trying to build their glory. Sultan Kalawun was buried right here. And where we are standing, it used to be originally the graveyard of the Fatimide rulers. So behind Al-Azhar Mosque, there used to be the tombs and the palaces of the Fatimid rulers. But after 200 years or so, many of the tombs and the palaces completely lost. And rebuilding the older areas and the gardens and the palaces and the fountains that it used to be behind the Fatimid palaces. And this is where we are. A piece of land, porches by Sultan Kalawun to build his complex, the school, the tomb, and the hospital. That's why the irregular shape of the complex, due to the fact the land they take and the remaining land is actually irregular. And you will find that in most of the Mameluk monuments in Al Mu'izz Street. The shapes of mosques, schools, and hospitals, all irregular. They are all irregular, sometimes square, sometimes rectangular, sometimes detachable in the corner. This is the fact that due to shortage of land at that time, they were able to build and innovate new designs, irregular designs. And that's why these complex give us a wonderful new ideas, a single entrance, a passageway in the middle, dividing the land into two parts the tomb where we are, the school and the hospital and the mosque on the other side. This is extremely new design, which became almost the master design that most of the Mameluk sultans follow after Kalawon. So thanks for Kalawon who gave us this massive complex. One of the interesting things we see here is the massive columns. So the columns we see everywhere looks very Christian in style. Columns with capitals look like Roman columns. So these Roman columns and these supporting pillars inside and outside take us right away to what we call it Byzantian art. Byzantian art or Christian art in 1300 AD in Egypt because of the cultural contact between the Mamelukes and the surrounding worlds. 
So Egypt used to be in the middle of the world. We have the Byzantians on the other side of the Mediterranean. We have the Moors on the western side of the Mediterranean. And we have the Seljuk in Syria. So the Mamluks took from all these elements. Inside the tomb, we have a number of Eastern elements that Kalawon and his artists were able to share. And one of those elements is the famous calligraphy in Kufi writings. This is the word that says Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, Muhammad. And the word Muhammad is designed in a square almost boxy style and inside the square and the boxes we have the word goes in all directions this is a kufi in style but this is an eastern influence from far beyond persia maybe from india maybe from china but that's one of the eastern elements here the decoration of the flowers the marble that it's carved neatly with flowers here this is again another eastern influence we think this is a persian influence where the flowers and the decoration here and this is what the complex is offering to us a mishmash of ideas and a mishmash of artistic fashions Kalawon's hospital was state of art in its day. It offered 2,000 beds and many rare amenities to patients. It was working up until the late Ottoman period or the 19th century, but was demolished in 1910. The hospital of the complex, it was one of the dreams of the Sultan. He designed his complex in a way to include a hospital at the back of the complex. And as we see, we have the main famous buildings is what we see in the front. The mausoleum on the right and the madrasa to the left. And the reason why they start with the mausoleum and the madrasa right on the main street is the importance of having qibla. Qibla is where the sanctuary to pray. So the mausoleum needs the Qibla, which faces southeast to Mecca. The madrasa and the mosque also needs a Qibla, 
which southeast. Southeast where we are is the main road and that's why the school and the mausoleum faces the street. And that's why eventually the hospital came all the way on the back, occupying the whole area on the back of the complex. It's a huge area of land, largely no longer exists, and there is a new hospital was built in 1915 by the Egyptian government for eye disease. So we do have the small eye hospital currently in function since 1915, sitting on what it used to be the ancient hospital. We believe, and archaeologists excavated the area believe, that the hospital used to be much larger area than it is today. And of course, the piece of land that the whole complex was sitting on, it was a little more than a thousand square meters. Falawon complex is the mausoleum. It was modeled on the dome of the rock in Jerusalem, but it stands out in its own right. The building was restored as part of the project to revive the entire Al Muaz Street, and it now stands out as one of the most beautiful monuments in Cairo. In fact, it's regarded as one of the most beautiful buildings across the Muslim world, a mausoleum to compete with the famous Taj Mahal of India. And this brings us to the end of this episode of Treasures. Thank you for watching, and until we meet again, it's goodbye.